Going down. <laughs> that was great. Metro Exodus has some bad news for agoraphobes. This latest instalment in the Irradiated series will see hero Artyom leave behind the dark tunnels and bunkers that have been its traditional stomping ground and head out to more open world areas. Not that the open world seems to be much friendlier than the cloying darkness of the tunnels, of course. As Artyom, you're one of the survivors of a nuclear war that destroyed civilization as we know it. On this new journey, you're joined by your wife, Anna, yep, that's her there, and a bunch of Spartan rangers, and you can expect delays because you're travelling by train. Your first stop? A patch of desolate Russian wilderness, which you can explore at your leisure. The story is pretty clear about directing you towards the church in the distance, but there are no objective markers. Just a map and a compass, Look, meaning right. you're free to explore decrepit train carriages at your own free will. Executive producer John Bloch explained using story and landmarks to direct you is all about preserving the immersion. He says that the things that you're doing in the demo, like going with Anna to this church, there's a reason in the story to do that. There aren't things like go and kill 10 of these things and then bring back their pelts. Just as you can pick and choose where to go, you can also choose whether to go in all guns blazing or extinguish lights from the shadows so no one sees your stealth takedown coming. Kill enough humans and some of them, like this guy right here, will even surrender, hoping that you'll be merciful and spare them. That, of course, depends on how vengeful you're feeling. Praise be to Tsarfish, the protector of the people. Bloch goes on to say that they've found other ways to incentivize players to explore the environment and go and find all these different areas that aren't part of the main golden path. They're trying to do that in ways that feel more natural, like making things look more interesting from far away so the player's curiosity makes them want to go see what's over there. In the section we played, that worked. The world felt purpose made in that if you spotted something like an empty train carriage and went to look at it, you were going to be rewarded with some loot on a dead body that you might have otherwise missed. The minimal UI, free of stats and ammo and health counts, are all part of the same core development principle. You're stepping into the shoes of Artyom, so we wanted you to feel like you're becoming him, says Bloch. One of the things that rips you out of that is if we bring up something on screen. Not that you miss out on all the useful information, you just get it another way. On the weapons you can see how many rounds are in the magazine, so you can tell without having a little number on the screen showing how much ammo you have left, says Bloch. Crafting is a big part of Metro 2, as you get a backpack early on that gives you the power to customise weapons on the fly. All the different types of gun are modular, giving you a load of options. You can even dismantle weapons that you find strewn across the wasteland for their valuable parts instead of picking them up. Then use these bits to craft at workshops and outposts, but you'll need to scavenge or trade for the materials too. It's worth doing because, as in life, nothing in Metro Exodus lasts forever. Like the guest mask, for example. As one of the signatures of Metro gameplay, it's still important to survive certain areas, but it can now break completely. Your weapons will be similarly delicate and you'll need to clean them regularly to stop them from overheating, but that costs chemicals. Even if you're buffing them to a brilliant shine on the regular, they'll still degrade. Hey, no one says life in the nuclear wasteland was going to be easy especially when it comes to enemies. As well as these usual overgrown rodents, you also have these ghoulish humans who will throw cinder blocks at you like supercharged versions of Fallout's ghouls. So, what else has changed? There's now a day and night system and dynamic weather, neither things you really had to worry about when all the action happened underground. It's all part of a radical upgrade to a new engine, something that's easy to see in the open, icy landscape we played through. It also feels like the most ambitious outing for the series yet, because managing a tense, tight experience is easy when you've got your players trapped in tunnels, not so much when they can roam the world at will. God of War proved the mix of linear story and more open world sections could work in perfect, bloody harmony, and here's hoping Metro's mutants can do just the same. Artyom, I heard you call me. It was so great there. <coughs> but I... I heard you and couldn't leave you. <coughs> so that's our thoughts on Metro Exodus so far. Let us know what you think of it in the comments below. Click the box on the left for more content from us. And don't forget to hit that big button in the middle for more news, reviews, previews and features right here on Games Radar Plus.